you want. I mean, there's one or two furs that I have used over the years. And the, the best one, one of the best is mink. This one here. And this is a natural black. And I'm going to show you some mink patches here. These are, this is a natural kind of like brown. And you've got your white, obviously. And then you get a nice grey colour. Is that done? And then, in this case, this is a natural black. You can see it's a lovely black. Yeah, it has a sort of slight, and the inside and in for itself is like a an iron colour, like an iron blue dud type. But you can tie these patterns, and I'll show you. This is the same fly, but tied in white. And it does work. The grey. It's a nice grey there, it's quite light as you see. Now you can darken it down to get a dark grey. And this is here is a mix of black and the grey and the natural brown together, so you get another colour. So you can mix these together. And that's the colour there. That's that basically has the grey, the brown and the black blended. That makes for a good dubbing. Uh, it can be used in a lot of flies. But very good at the beginning of the season is black or a dark colour. And it does give the impression sometimes a midge coming off, so you can use it. It's very and it's very simple to tie. Now, the hook is you I'm using is a size 14 gub hook. It's a medium wire hook, so there's many out there. You can choose yourself what you like. I'll just put this the hook in the vise. That's fine. Tighten up. Thread. I'm just going to use a uni thread in black and eight o. Start at the eye and put down a layer of thread. Just work your way around the hook shank and round the bend to this point here. And then remove the base piece and I turn there to tidy it up. Now you remove the, the fur. This is the fur here that's been removed from the skin. And then I use a, b a blend or a blender to pull it together. And it's makes it easier to actually dub onto the thread. Now I don't use any waxes or anything to dub thread this on. I don't want that. You'll never be able to move it around if you do it. Now you can lightly dub it on. And then what we do is start it off quite thin. Make sure you get started well. And then you just work your way up forming a, like a tapered shape. Now don't be shy with the dubbing. Now, what I like to do is this point here, just as it lines up with the point of the hook, you can bring the thread down, pull the dubbing away, tightens it up and then take the dubbing back up. And then this will give you a nicer taper and a stronger body if you do that. And don't be shy with the taper because you are represent Cadis. And basically the roughness of your fingers can draw back those fibres. If you want to bring out some of the guard there, you can use the Velcro, you just lightly run it through. Sometimes they're a wee bit long, so you can take them out. And there we are. Now the deer hair, you can use black, you can dye black on this one. You could use a darker brown, but what I'm going to use here is elk. This is the elk colour. Just take some from the skin. Get it as close to the skin as you can go. You don't want to leave half cut ends. Just get in the way when you go back in to get some more. And the first thing we do is kind of tidy up or take away the under fluff. You don't want that. And then get your stacker. Tip first. And then tap it onto your desk. And to line up the ends. As you can see there. Hold them in your finger and thumb. Get the length you would like, just to the back of the hook. If you measure, probably the length of the, say from the eye to the back of the hook, is the length of the wing. Just hold that nice and tight. The measure you're looking for is there to cut. I want you to basically cut at the length of the thorax. So, you trim this. And then, Keep a hold of the wing, don't let the wing go, keep it on the top, come in and then you can come in with some loose turns first to make sure you catch in these cut ends. 
and then you can tighten up. Don't worry about the loose turns of thread, you can cover these up with the thread turns. Just cut them down until you're happy. Then let go of your wing. Now what I'm just going to do is just pull it towards the eye at this end here. Which will slightly, as you can see, if I, if I push this forward you'll see it creases here. Slightly press on it, which will reduce the height. Just drop the wing a wee bit. For the horns, I'm just going to use... This is some summer duck. Now, the main end for tying, it's a classic salmon fly, so which I use this for. Uh, just to keep that for them. But the other side, you get some really nice fibres that normally you would throw away. These are ideal for horns. So I'm going to take two away. The length, you can have them as long as you like and as short as you like. It's up to yourself. These are just a wee so touch to the fly that I like to see in these flies. So just off them. Say maybe and use a measure. Say a wing and a wing and a half length. So go on the side, just give me a loose turn. Just use the wing to separate these to push them to the side and then you can Come in there and they'll curl them slightly, just to get them to sit where you want. Looks okay. You can fold this back. And break it off. Then we go back to our dubbing again with natural black mink. Now don't be shy of a thorax on this. I like it quite heavy because it does drown the fly. You need to do that. You need to be able to pull it. Again, put the dubbing on the thread. If you always put too much on, you can always take it off as you build up. Now I'm going to build up from the front up towards the wing and then come back down. So you start off quite light, stretch out the dubbing, just twist and stretch it out. Just work your way up. What will happen as well, this will Something that usually causes the guard hairs to spring out and you want that, it gives it a kind of leg look. Just keep working away. Every fly, to be honest with you, would be slightly different. Now, let's just check your side just to make sure it's okay, yep. Yeah. Take your time, come back down. Just going to draw his fibres forward, bring the, the dubbing to the front. Now you could pull this through like that. And do a turn in front. What I'm doing there is pulling the dubbing towards the back and locking it in with a turn in front. Now what I'm going to do is some, some varnish. Onto the thread. And then I'm going to put finish. Just come in here and then just ignore that. So tie it in, hook finish and finish off the fly at the same time. Just give it a wee minute to, to dry. And then what I'm going to do is just come in here and bring out some of the, the guard here with the Velcro in the thorax area. And there we are. Basically that's a, it's a drowned mouse caddis, or a cad mouse caddis, quite simple. Just You can gink a whole fly up if you want, or just get your floatant onto it. Or as it is, just all we have to do is pull it, the, the mink soaks up the water. The guard hairs are really nice and shiny, and it certainly it can fish react big time to a drowned caddis pattern both on rivers and locks. Now I'm just going to finish off the head with a wee coat just to make it a wee bit neater. Obviously we put finishing with the varnish on it seals inside. And there we go. Now I'm just going to make sure the eye's clean. 
and I get my dubbing needle. And there we go. Really simple fly to tie. I hope you enjoyed that. And that is your mouse cast.